So here's a lot of what we wind up spending our time doing in Cobblestone, creating contract records. And there's a couple of different methods of creating these records. We'll go over some of them. The first one I wanna talk about though is creating a record from scratch, the most common method of entering a contract. So on our top navigation menu, we head to contracts and add contract. We're brought forward to a, to a, a page that asks us to select our type, our contract type and that pulls from the list we were just looking at of types that are designated for our contracts table. Once we've selected that and we continue, we're taken to an ad screen. And this ad screen is just like any other. It's got our required fields. It's got some optional fields. It's got some grayed out fields. And these fields may differ from contract type to contract type because thankfully, we can designate which fields go on which types because a service agreement is probably going to have to have very different information than something like a non-disclosure agreement so we want to make sure you're not looking at data that is totally irrelevant to that type so like we mentioned before you fill out everything you can you click save and continue and we're brought to the details screen now there are a handful of incredibly important fields on a contract. Many of these are required out of the box. Contract type, for example, the legal form of the agreement, we absolutely have to have that on there. The system needs to know what type it is so it knows which fields to display. Department or division. We've already talked about departments a little bit. So which department is this particular record primarily assigned? This will also go hand in hand with permissions that we're gonna look at next time. The employee, who's the internal employee assigned to or responsible for this record? I tend to refer to this as the employee owner. So if you hear me talking about the owner of a record, I really mean the employee. Contract title. Some organizations do choose to not use this, but out of the box, it is required. I really like it. It's just a short, simple name to help us search for and locate a given contract. Status, that's that piece of master reference data that we were just talking about. So where in the life cycle is this particular agreement? Vendor customer, who's the counterparty? Who's the other side of this contract? And then if we skip down the image a little bit, the contract ID, this is one that is system generated for us. And it's simply how Cobblestone knows which record this is. There's also a handful of key dates that we have kind of in the middle of this set of images. The effective date, okay, it's pretty self-explanatory, the date the contract becomes effective. Now, this particular field is not required out of the box. However, I really like to enter it. That way we can get a little bit more information about it. On the other side of that is the expiration date. Now that is required, the date the contract expires. But one of the really nice things about this is that it includes an out of the box system alert. And what that alert does is it reaches out to the employee or employee owner on this record and just kind of says, hi, I'm a contract who's expiring today you might wanna take a look at me and do whatever you need to according to corporate regulations. The next items we have in the date group are contract notify days and expiration warning date. And I like to talk about these two really in the same breath because one informs the other. Contract notify days, we fill in, it defaults to 60 out of the box, but you can change that. This is how many days prior to the record's expiration date will we send out the expiration warning date? So in this case, and this image is on the old side, but the expiration date was the 19th of October, 2017. And I needed a, an expiration warning 60 days ahead of that. So it sent the warning on the 20th of August, 2017. And that's another out of the box alert that goes to the employee and it says, hi, I've reached the expiration warning date, do whatever you need to. There's one more date and it's not pictured on here that offers an out of the box alert. And that is the annual review date. We can manually set that and it sends an alert that says, hi, I've reached the review date, 
come on in and take a look at whatever you need to. So once we filled all of that out, we've got our detail screen. There are a handful of items on the side menu that I always like to talk about here. And these first four that I have picked out, assign additional employees, companies, departments, and locations, they all work very similarly. If we use assign employees, we can have additional employees included as the owner on here. So in this case, Roman Bellis was the primary employee, but I could potentially be assigned as an additional employee. You can have as many additional employees as you need, but you're always going to have just one primary. Additional companies. This is really useful if you have a multi-party agreement. So here, our primary counterparty is the ABC company, but I could have, you know, one, two, three services assigned as an additional company because this is a three-way contract. Assigned departments works just like assigning multiple departments to a user. We can say, oh, well, this belongs to the maintenance and facilities department, but finance needs access to it too. So I'm going to assign finance as an additional department. And then locations the same way if multiple physical branches of the organization need to do that. The one I like even more though is down just a little bit and is company info. This offers a quick link back to the company details screen for the primary counterparty. So if I click this for this record, I would go to the details screen for ABC company. Of course, just like every other or almost every other area of the system, we have our file attachments and it works the exact same way. When we're working with one of these files and attachments areas, we need to add something in new. We've got some options. We can, on a person to person level, set up a cloud app. We can find a local or network file with single file upload. If you click browse, it goes to your operating systems file explorer. You find it, you click it, you open it, and it uploads it. Or you can drag and drop one or more files into the big blue rectangle down here and have them all added to the record. Just below this add area is a list oops, of all of the files that are attached to that particular record. Now this is a list screen. So you've got the same options you've got on so many other list screens. We can sort, we can filter, we can do what we need to. But this one's unique. So we've also got some very special items on here. We've got this book that lets us preview the document without downloading it. So it just opens it up in our web browser. We can click the red toolbox for some of our administrative tools for the file. And now we've got a handful of pieces of data that are relevant to that, like notes, either that we've put in ourselves up here, notes that may have come directly from cobblestone, when it was uploaded, who uploaded it, so on and so on. So we've got wonderful pieces of information regarding this file. Speaking of files and adding contracts, the other major way of adding a contract is by use of Visdom AI. And we can get to this in one of two ways. You could go to contracts and just like adding one from scratch with add contract record, instead you go down to add contract with Visdom AI and you're given a prompt. It says, okay, what kind of contract do you want to add? Great, you make your selection, then you choose your file. Then click save and continue. That file will automatically be attached once you've gone through the add screen. The other option is in the, the very top of the side menu, we've got this big gray rectangle to drag and drop a file to create a new record. Once we bring that file over, we get a pop-up that asks, what kind of record do you want to make? Or do we want to keep it in file queue? If I selected contract, for example, then I get to my contract type selection. If I left it in file queue, I could get to my file queue by using my user menu in the upper right hand corner and heading down to pending files. And what I can do here is say, okay, here's a file that I've uploaded that I left in queue. I could delete it. I could preview it inside the web browser. I could attach it to an existing contract, or I could create a brand new contract from it, or I could assign this document to another employee, another user, say, you know what? I am not ready to take action on this document, 
but I need you to take action on that document. So very, very useful if you're not ready to act upon the document immediately. Either way, if we're adding a document by way of Vistum, we get a screen that's kind of like this. We get our little pop-up robot guy. He examines the document. He runs it through OCR. And we get a screen that looks like this one. So side by side, we have our document and our ad screen. Based on Visdom's configuration, we can pull information directly from the document into the ad screen. Now, of course, we always want to double check that information because it's not necessarily perfect. It is based on what we've taught it. So it doesn't know what we haven't taught it. It's going to do its best, though. And we're going to talk a lot more about Visdom on our fifth admin session because that really is some advanced configuration. But that's one more way of getting that, uh, that item in there.